Um, this is another video tutorial. So for this video, we are going to look at how do we implement um, Excel file generation from the server. Okay, so let me show you what, what we have here first. Um, basically over here is the system that report uh, check-in check-out for the car into the parking lot. And we can click on this button so that uh, the button here will allow us to create the Excel file like this. And as you can see, it's going to output this as a single Excel file with the query result. So in this case, um, now let's take a look at the program together. The first thing that you need in order to have Excel support is going to your project file, which is available right here. Um, you, you, you have to reference to line number 11. This line is to say we want the support for the lit. The name of this library is EPP+. And um, after you have included this one in there, now let's look at our page one more time. So in this case, I have implemented a button here as a link that go to this link, which is going to the controller homes and going to the action export Excel. So in this case, let's examine this together. So let's go to controller function, um, home controller, and look at the action export Excel. Now, <clears throat> over here, um, the function does not take any input for now. Okay, and then what I did was that. Uh, I would like to output the file that contain two columns. So as you can see um, over here, the first row also contain um, the header part, including license number and check-in time. So basically at the beginnings, when you want to prepare the exports of the Excel file, you have to come up with the arrays, string arrays that contain the header, um, column here, so I have two elements called license numbers and check-in time. And then the second step is to prepare the by array declarations because this one is the one that we use to create the file that we can send back to the client, to the web browser. Keep in mind that this activity is happening at the con controller part, which is happening at the server size. So in order to send something back from the server, you can send it back by using iAction result that could be uh, the stream of picture, uh, the stream of JSON data, or a file. Okay, so whenever you want to send out the file back, then you need to make the calculation of the byte array like this. And initially, it's going to be equal to nothing. Okay, we just make the calculation for this. And next step is to include the um, create the new package objects based on this class and since this one you know whenever you create this very often it's going to consume a lot of memory by putting this declaration inside um, using statement here okay using parentheses and then you create the object right here and then we have the be beginning and the end of this statement is to make sure that every time when this task has been done it's going to remove the object from the memory so that uh, you have more memory to do for something else. All right, next step. For step number four, in this case, in order to, after you already cr create the arrays to contain the columns names, the next step is to create the worksheet. The worksheet is basically the tab like this in your Excel file by using command package.workbook.worksheets.add, then you can also name the label of the tab. In my case, I put final. Now this one return an object called worksheet. Now once you have the worksheet objects, that one will represent this worksheet right here in Excel. Okay, now what else? So I need to loop to the arrays that I have over here and then create the header row. Now for the header rows, um, I need to loop to the column names array like here so there are two elements so it's going to perform this for two times the first time as you can see you can reference to each column is row 
we call it each cell by looking at worksheet dot cells with s the first input parameter is the number of the rows and the second input parameter is number of the column and uh, unlike when we whenever you want to do the indexing in c sharp we start always start with zero but when you want to refer to the cell start with one so whenever you have one right here at the beginning i is equal to zero zero plus one become equal to one so that means we are referred to this cell and there are two parts whenever you want to set the data in here uh, the data itself can be set using dot value okay and then i get the data from the array members which is column number col sorry column names column names and when you put i mean it's going to be the first elements and also you can set up the styling so in this case i can use dot style dot font dot size to set the font size i can also set that this font style is the bold text okay equal to true at the same time I can put the border allow it by using this command on line number 77 here is to put um, the border allow it and also in this case I would like to fill the background color of this so there are two things that I have to perform so line number 79 is to say I want to fill in the solid color and line number 80 is to fill in the background color and the color that I pick it from here is by using command from ARGB so that is the RGB color code in this case by completing this loop then we got the first row now for subsequent row here is the actual data um, if you look at the result here I just want to show that the data in the column okay this data is coming from um, the database called check-in table okay I'm going to show you the uh, structure structure later now let's take a look at the code one more time okay so now after we already um, fill in the header row the next step is to fill in subsequent row which is coming from the query form database so in this case we construct the for each um, then look at the context dot check-ins this is the table names and we convert it into the list so that we can perform the looping over here each time when we perform the loop we get an object that belong to check-in class um, now you can check and check the check-in card like here check-in class is uh, considering of three different input pro um, sorry three different informations including number license page uh, license names and check-in time so this way okay um, whenever we make the query you got three different information for each object that represent each row in the data table in this case let's back to our controller one more time okay so now after we know that okay each query each row is going to have an object that consists of three different information but in our case we just want to fill in the license number and the check-in time so what I did was that I create another for loop here so each time when we got the objects we're gonna have to fill in the first column and the second column so that's why it's become two time okay um, and we can refer to each cell starting with the row as you can see now I set up the rows equal to two so it's going to, it's going to jump from one to two and um, the column itself now is starting from one so this one is going to put the font size equal to 12 um, set the border allow it and then set the value and you can see now that in order to reference to each column here uh, I can put the column equal to one that represent the first column and two for the second column right here and the information is coming from this data so item dot license number the item is because of this loop okay now there is one thing that you can see here that I have a background color in the ribbon manner meaning I don't want to fill in um, green color for every rows I just want to skip the even rows so in this case to tell them that okay just fill in only if it is not events okay in this case is that we use if row percent two equal to zero this is to find out whether or not this is the even row 
and um, if it is the even low then we fill in the color as you can see this is the odd low this is even row this is odd and this is even so if it is an even row then we perform this so we say hey we want to um, set up the pattern type just like the header part and we set up the background color then we set up the same thing for the second column now if you want to change the color for second column feel free to do so by changing this number okay after this is done we say every time we perform the loop we want to go to the next row so we increment the value of row by one using line number 111 okay and then after this is done you're gonna get uh, something similar to this but keep in mind that this is one happened in the memory okay and we also need to make sure that we have the uh, the size that is auto fit because otherwise going to show you something like this now to have auto fit in terms of the width then you perform line number 114 over here okay and then uh, we can refer to the worksheet dimension address and then call command auto fit columns this way is going to fit all the column in your worksheet okay with line number 114 and after this is done, imagine that the worksheet is the objects in the memory. We're going to have to turn this into uh, the byte arrays that is suitable for the file transfers. So in this case, as you can see, we say, hey, package, could you please convert it into the array and then give it to the result? If you recall yourself at the beginning, we have the variable called results that is based on the byte array. So when this is converted into byte array, Okay, the next step is to perform line number nine. That, I'm sorry, the step number nine. Uh, the result as the byte array will be used as the first input when you create the object file, new objects file. The second input parameter is the types of the file that we want to return. And the third input parameter is the name of the file. You can change this as you, um, as you view. And this one is returning the file and whenever you have the link, like what I have here, okay, the link, that one is going to trigger our controller. The controller send, that, send back the file. Whenever the file is already available at the client size, like what I'm going to show you here, I click on it. Okay, as you can see, we got the new file. All right, so this is how Excel is working in um, .NET Core. Again, let's make a quick review. Um, before we make a quick review, also I want to show you that whenever you want to create the uh, the model here, you can go to the homes and say um, check in. Then you can, uh, I think we're gonna have to go to check in. Okay, then you can create the new check in. Okay, license number and check in time whatever you like and then after you have the data enough for your query then you can um, generate the report this is just a sim simple report as you can see I did not have any fancy query but in your final exam you might want to also develop your own query that I uh, give some guideline in the previous port okay in this case as you can see here my query is really simple I take all the query um, take all the rows from the query, okay, based on check-in. All right, um, if you have any question about uh, making Excel possible for your .NET Core application, please let me know. The code will be available by GitHub. Thank you for watching.